Hey, this is Lewis from Oxygen, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how to create an easy overlap effect using Z index and negative margin. So you'll see on this page, I've got this hero section here, and in this content section, but I have this testimonial element overlapping both the hero section and the content section, sort of floating above it. So it looks pretty cool. Uh, so let me show you how to create that effect in Oxygen. So here's my page in Oxygen, just with the hero section and the content section. And now what I'm going to do is add a testimonial element and make it overlap uh, right between the two. So the, the section on top is where I'm going to add the testimonial element. So let's, let's go to Add, Testimonial, and let me style this so it looks good. So we're going to do Advanced, Background, give it a white background, give it, say, 50 pixels padding on all sides. Let's go to Effects, Box Shadow and give it a 20% dark box shadow, let's say four pixels offset, 20 pixels blur, that'll make it pop off the page a little bit. And then let's go to uh, size and spacing. Let's give it a max width of 600 pixels. And let's go to borders and give it a border radius of three pixels. Okay, and here's our testimony, it looks good. Let me just pop in a little image here so it looks better. And here we go. There's the testimonial. Now let's go ahead and create the overlap effect. So to do that, we're gonna use negative margin. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take off all the padding on your section. So the testimonial is right up against the bottom of it. So remove the padding. The next thing you wanna do is space the testimonial away from the other elements. So if you want it to be this far away, just drag until it's where you want it. There we go, that looks pretty good. Uh, now let's go ahead and create the overlap. So to do that, we'll go to Advanced, Size and Spacing, and for the bottom margin, notice we add 100 pixels bottom margin, that it moves, it adds 100 pixels of space below it. But if we add negative margin, say negative 100 pixels, it pulls up the items below it. So let's go ahead and get that pulled up as much as we want. I'm going to say right in the middle of the image is going to look good. Now the problem is that, of course, this section is covering up the testimonial. Now in Oxygen, when you mouse over an element, it'll bring it to the front. But if the user was just viewing the page on the front end, this is what it would look like. So to fix that, we need to give the testimonial a z-index. So to do that, we're going to go to Advanced, and then we're going to go to Layout. And under Z index, we'll just give it any positive number. So I'll give it 10. And that's going to make it float above the rest of the elements. All elements with the lower Z index will have this testimonial floating above it. So there's the overlap. And then the last thing we want to do is since it's pulled this section up by negative 100 pixels, we want to give it that much space to compensate. We just drag down to give it the space. And there we go. There is our overlapping effect using negative margin in Z index. So to recap, we take all the padding off the section or the bottom of the section where we want the element to overlap. We go to the element, we go to advanced size and spacing, and we give it a negative margin. Looks like negative 117 is dead center right here. And then we add padding to the element that's after it. So it looks as it did before and there's enough space. And then, of course, lastly, you go to Advanced Layout Z-Index and give it a Z-Index so it actually appears. Okay, let's save this and take a look on the front end. And here we go, here is our beautiful overlap effect. Okay, next up, let's create something a little bit more complex. So I'm gonna show you how to create these feature blocks where we're using an overlap. So we've got a feature and then an image and then an image on the other side, and another feature, and the feature box is overlapping the image. It creates a cool effect. And we do this using negative margin and z-index. So let's go into Oxygen, and I'll show you how to create this step by step. So I'll first delete these existing feature blocks I have, and then I'll recreate them so you can follow along and learn how to do it. So to start, we're gonna add in a section. And then I'm gonna set the section background color to an off-white. I already know the hex code, I'm gonna use F7, FA, FF. And since I'm gonna reuse this elsewhere, let's make this a global color. I'm just gonna call this off-white. Now what we wanna do 
is design the feature box with the text on the button in it. So to do that, let's go ahead and add in a div. This is going to wrap the elements in our feature box. And we're going to give this div a white background color. But first, let's put all these styles in a class, since we're going to have many of these. So I'll call these um, my nice feature box, background color of white. And we're going to put a little shadow on it. So we're going to go to effects, box shadow. We're going to give it a about a 20% dark shadow, 18%, that's fine, with uh, three pixels offset, three pixels vertical offset, and 20 pixels of blur. So that makes it pop off the page just a little bit. Now let's go ahead and give it a border radius to round off those corners. So we'll go border, border radius, three pixel border radius. And now let's go ahead and add in heading, text, and a button to this uh, feature box. So I'll go ahead and add in a heading, and I'm going to give this a class called my nice feature heading, and we are going to use uh, 32 pixels for the font size. Uh, these might go multi-line, so I'm going to set the line height to 1.2, and then what we're going to do is add that nice little bar effect after the text. So let's change it to say key feature, and then we're going to go state after. And for the after, we're going to go to background. We're going to set the background color to uh, my brand color, which I've already saved in global colors. Then we're going to go to layout, display block. And it's not showing up yet because it has no size. So we're going to go to size and spacing and give it a width of, say, 60 pixels and a height of 5 pixels. And it's a little too close to the text, so let's give it, say, 10 pixel margin. Let's give it 16 pixel margin, and that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and go back to our feature uh, div right here and add some uh, padding on this so everything's not up against the edge. So we'll go size and spacing, padding, 50 pixels on all sides. That looks good. And now let's go ahead and add in our feature text. Just add in a text element. I'll call this my nice feature text. And we'll give it a font size of 21 pixels. And let's give it a font weight of 300. And then below that text, we're going to add in a button. So go to text link. And I'll call this my feature button. And let's go to advanced background. Give it a background color of the brand color. Let's go to typography make the text white, say 14 pixels, uh, one pixel letter spacing, 1.6 line height, and give it a font weight of 500 and font smoothing of anti-alias. Do you want to use font smoothing of anti-alias when you're using light text on a colored or dark background? And then to make this look like a button, we'll just go to borders, three pixel border radius, and size and spacing, and we'll give it uh, 10 pixels padding on the top and the bottom. Let's make it 11 pixels on the top and the bottom. And then we'll use double that. So 22 on the left and the right. And I'll just change this text to say, learn more. And then let's add a little uh, pointy arrow on the uh, end of the button. So we'll go to state, after. And we're going to use the uh, CSS code for that character, which is slash 00BB. And then we get that character right there. That's a cool little trick and then go to advanced size and spacing and give it six pixels of margin on the left to move it away from the text. In fact, let's use eight pixels margin left. Okay, so here we go. Let's add some space on this text. So I'm just gonna drag down till it looks good. Probably 32 pixels on the top and basically the same on the bottom, 32 pixels top and bottom. Okay, so now we've got our feature box looking good. So now let's go ahead and add in an image. So go add image. And I've got our feature box and our image. So the first thing we want to do is get these stacked horizontally instead of vertically. So go to the section, child element layout, stack child elements horizontally. And it doesn't fit, which is fine. So we're going to manually adjust the widths here. So we're going to go to the div for the feature box, and we're going to give it a width of 40%. That'll make it take 40% of the available width. And we're also going to have to give a width to the image of 60%, so the widths add up to 100%. And 
And now we've got our feature box, 40% width, image, 60% width. So it looks good. Let's go back to the section now and vertically align this box in the middle so it's centered with the image. And now let's go ahead and actually assign an image so it looks good. So let's browse. And I've already uploaded these images to the media library, so I'll just go ahead and choose an image right there. And there we go, looking good. So now let's go ahead and create the overlap effect. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use negative margin. So let's say we go over to this feature box, and I'm gonna add these styles on the ID, not the class. So you wanna choose the ID here. That's because I'm gonna add another feature box on the other side, and we're gonna want different negative margin. So go to the ID, that's gonna make the styles only apply to this individual feature box, and then go to advanced, size and spacing, and margin. And now if we add positive margin, for example, 50 pixels of margin on the right, there's now 50 pixels of margin on the right side of this element, 50 pixels of space between this element and the next element. But to get an overlap effect, we can use negative margin. This is what zero margin looks like. If we use negative margin, we start to pull the image into the element. So let's use negative 100 pixels of negative margin. So now we have the image overlapping the feature box. Now the problem is, is that the image is displaying above the box. Now in Oxygen, when you mouse over an item, it automatically brings it to the front so you can see it. But if you're not mousing over it, if you're just viewing it in the browser, this is what would happen. We don't want this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a property called Z index. So let's go back to the class and go to all styles, layout, and scroll down to Z index. But we're going to give this a Z index of 10. doesn't matter. Any positive number will work as long as it's higher than the Z index of this element. And now that we've given it that Z index, you'll see that no Z index, the image the image covers it. With a Z index, it appears in front of the image. So, okay, now we have got the overlap effect working. Now let's go ahead and center the content of this section. It looks a little weird now that we pulled the image 100 pixels to the left using that negative margin. So what we want to do now is push the image back to the right 50 pixels, right? We move it 100 pixels to the left, we move it 50 pixels to the right, that'll move this 50 pixels to the right, and then everything will be centered. So let's go back to the class here, go to size and spacing, and uh, let's go to, sorry, go back to the ID, negative 100 pixels margin on the right, 50 pixels margin left. And now that's centered, that looks good. So let's go ahead and duplicate this and then create the effect in the opposite order. So to do that, what we're going to do, we don't have to drag this thing around or anything. We're just going to go to the feature box. We're going to go to the ID because we only want to change the position of this one. We're going to go to advanced, layout. We're going to go to order under Flexbox child controls. We're going to change order to two. And that's going to make this appear second in the box. So right now default order, but if we change the order, we change the order without actually moving the element around. Now we just need to reverse the styles we're using for the margin. So let's go size and spacing, margin, and if we remove the margins, here's how it looks. We want to pull this 100 pixels to the left, so we'll go minus 100, and then we want to push the image 50 pixels to the right to center it. So we'll go to the image and add 50 pixels margin on the left to push it to the right. And let's go ahead and change this image just so it looks good. Let's browse, let's find uh, another image. Let's change to say another feature. And just to finish this up, let's go ahead and add in the same background color on the top section. And let's save this and take a look on the front end. Okay, here are our beautiful feature blocks with the overlap effect. Looks great. Now let's go ahead and make this responsive. So let's say we go down to page container and below. Still looks good, but let's say we now go down to less than 992. Starting to look a little bit cramped. So let's go ahead and change the image to be 50% width. 
here. If you go 50% and 50%, and let's make the feature box 50% width as well. So let's go to the class there, so it applies to both at once, 50%. And okay, that's looking pretty good, but let's go ahead and shrink the screen smaller. And now it's just too tight, so now we need to stack this vertically. So let's go to the section and choose Stack Child Elements Vertically. And let's do the same for both sections. And now you'll notice that it kind of looks wonky. Well, that's because this is still 50% width. So instead, let's make this 90% width. And let's go ahead and make the, let's do that on the class actually, so both are made 90% width. So width, percent, 90. And let's go ahead and make the image 100% width. So image is 100% width. And let's go ahead and get them in the same order. So feature image, we want the feature on top. So let's go back to the ID, layout, flex order, change this to zero. And now this is at the beginning. So they're both in the same order. Now it's still looking a bit wonky because of the margins. So let's reset those margins. So let's go to this image and just give it zero pixels margin on all sides. Let's go to this image and do the same. And then let's go to this feature box, go to the ID and give it zero pixels margin on all sides. Same for this one. And now it's looking pretty good. Now to create the overlap effect, instead of doing a horizontal overlap, we're gonna do a vertical overlap. So margin zero, what do we do? Negative margin, let's go negative 100 and we get the overlap. Let's apply the same result to the other feature box. And there we go. We've made it responsive. Here it is full size. Here it is on a small screen. Looking good. Okay, that is how to create the overlapping effect using negative margin and z-index horizontally. So let's go ahead and save this and then take a look on the front end. And look at that looks excellent. Okay, again, this is Lewis from Oxygen, and thank you very much for watching.